First Class V here, back in the GCS Army helpful video. And today we're on part four of our series of the Access Administrator. And I'm going to teach you guys how to have your soldiers um, self enroll in GCS Army. All right. So, a few reasons why this may be. Um, I've had some people come from the National Guard that are not registered, brand new soldiers coming out of basic training, EIT, that are not registered. You need to create an account, get a personnel number so that you can actually onboard them inside GCS's army. Unfortunately, I am already registered, so I'm not going to show you step by step on the actual uh, website. However, I do have a uh, registration guide that we're going to go through step by step, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys get something out of this. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I'm always adding new videos. Um, like I said, this video series here is going to be pretty lengthy. I think I got 34, 35 videos planned for this series. So if there's something that you want to see uh, taught in the Access Administrative Series, let me know. Leave your comments down below or leave your uh, ideas on the community tab. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let me share my screen here. All right. So GCS is Army Self Registration. All right. So this job aid is actually on GCS's Army. Um, it's been updated to include pay plans as well. OK, so um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the self -registra uh, registration process flow, the prerequisites and how to actually navigate all the sections and uh, actually complete a self -res uh, registration. So. GC Army self registration process flow. OK, so GC's G this process flow is designed to keep you on track and actually be able to get you GCS Army access. All right, so you got your registration requirement. Your access administrator provides you the registration link, which I will include in the comments down below. Uh, registration form is submitted and validated. OK, personnel HR data created in GCS Army. Once self registration is complete, you go into what they call a bucket list where you have no roles, no positions. Um, once you self register, you cannot just. Get access the same day. You must wait 24 hours. All right. Um, after 24 hours, you're going to be moved from the bucket list and go into uh, from the bucket list to a position with roles. Um, user NA and AA both receive a workflow notification. Now, with this said, we all know that recently the uh, you know they've been pushing to reaffirm and a lot of us have not been doing the right thing with GCS Army for a very long time. So in order to get access, you know, you need those G track certificates. You need that SAR, you need the assumption of command, the appointment order uh, memo. You know, what are you going to do inside of GCS's Army? All right. So some of the prerequisites for this to register, you got to have a valid current cat card. All right. So you must know your unit six character UIC. All right. So hopefully you all know that. And then once you have that information, you're going to insert your CAC and you're going to go to this website right here, gcsarmy.army.mil, hr.selfregister. All right, so once you're on the screen here, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to click your uh, certificate, enter your PIN. This screen here will pop up saying, hey, I acknowledge the Privacy Act statement. From there, the system recognizes the if, if the system recognizes that you've already have a GCS Army personnel number, it's going to tell you that you've already registered and it exists. All right, you'll see this message right here. Personnel already exists in GCS Army, blah, blah, blah. All right, so in the event that does happen, you're going to do is write down the personnel number and click exit button and provide that personnel uh, number to your AA as soon as possible. From there, the AA can do a couple different things. They can either rehire you or they can transfer you. If you do not get the message above, then you are not registered yet, and you should proceed to step six of the handout. So if you want to copy this handout, make sure you leave me your email, contact me through Facebook or uh, my military email, dennis.j.valor2.mil at mail.mil, and I'll be able to get you this. All right, so once it identifies that you need to register, okay, so it's going to come up here. You're going to have to enter some information here, all right? Your EPDA reads no, do not complete this form, close all browsers, reinsert your cat, restart the transaction. OK, so on occasion, you may have to do this a few times in order for it to actually uh, work, depending on uh, your computer and stuff. All right, so basically, 
you're going to fill out your UIC, okay? So you need to know. So once once your CAC is in, it's going to pull your DOD ID and some of this information should be already filled out, all right? Your uh, first name, middle, last, all right? Army, make sure you select what Army or uh, what branch of service you are, all right? So like I said, the pre-populated fields will verify uh, that the CAC is correct. All right, do not continue with self-registration if any of that's wrong, okay? Do not do that. If that does not fix the problem, you need to create a help ticket and uh, get with your AA for that. So in the UIC field, you're, like I said, you're gonna type in your six character, which would be your UIC in this instance, Whiskey Hotel 53 Alpha Zero, okay? You're gonna click the UIC check button and it's gonna let you know if it's valid, the unit does not exist in GCS's army, the unit is not active in GCS's army, or the UIC contains invalid characters. So if you do get this message, okay, so if it's valid, you're good to go, you can proceed. Um, if you get does not exist in G army, the USC does not exist, check your entry, try again. Usually sometimes if it's an O, you may put a zero, a zero may be an O. All right, so just keep that in mind. Um, like I said, that's pretty self-explanatory. Then it's gonna ask you to type in your social security number. You're gonna type it in once, and then you're gonna type it in again to confirm that it is your social security number. Type carefully, these numbers in these fields must be identical. So in the event you do mess up one of these numbers, it's gonna kick you back and say it does not match. All right, so in the event you do need to find that, you can actually go to active uh, client and you can actually pull your personnel and get your information right from there. Right? I'm not gonna cover too much into that, but displays personal, okay? So like I said, make sure your uh, date of birth is inputted your work phone, um, your enterprise email, okay? This is a requirement. You have to put your enterprise email. Do not use your Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, whatever it may be. It must be a, a dot .mail, all right? Select your date of birth, like I said, your gender, your work phone, etc. Now, if you are a civilian uh, employee or civilian contractor, you can put your .ctr and .civ. For example, civilian employee email address will look like john.j.do.civ at mail.mil, all right? So make sure you keep that in mind. So in part E, you're gonna select your personnel type. All right, so for here, this is gonna be pretty easy. For most of us, we're going to be active duty, all right? So there's a table that explains this. You're a United States active duty soldier representing a branch of Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, or Coast Guard. You're active, then you're gonna select active, all right? If you're a DOD civilian, it's gonna tell you if you meet the criteria, that's what you will select. All right, note additional fields will appear that correspond with personnel type you choose, all right? So in the event of this, complete the following required fields, okay? So we're Army National Guard enlisted. It's gonna ask for your MOS, your grade, your height, your weight, your hair, eye color. All right, make sure that you pay attention to your height, weight, eye color, because it affects more than just getting you access to VCS and Army. Most of the time that I have to fix like driver's license and things like that is because either the height, weight, eye color are blank or they're wrong. All right, just keep that in mind. I said you will import all that and you'll proceed to step 16. And basically it's just gonna, it's just gonna fill out the information. What your MOS is, um, your occupational category. So you're gonna do. Once that's done, personnel type for DA civilians, locals. All right, so we're really not gonna mess with that on this video because most of us are act gonna be active duty or national, some part of the armed forces. And of course, you got your NAF civilians, all right? This is how you would do that for them. Like I said, I'm not gonna pay, go too far into that because uh, I don't know, we're Army. So after everything you input, right, the system is gonna display a confirmation screen that accepts your entries. Pre -com please confirm that the information is correct. So once your information is correct, right, you're either going to edit or you're going to register. So if you click the register button, submit your entry, okay? The system process your registration and creates an intermediate document, IDOC, that can be used as a reference if needed, all right? So once you submit, you'll see this submission below. Your request was submitted and processed in GCS's Army. IDOC number is this, all right? So make sure you record or print this IDOC number because it comes in handy. There has been instances where a soldier is registered and it doesn't register on the actual GCS's Army system and we have to help a, uh, drop a help ticket and they're going to ask for this number right here. All right, so keep that in mind. Like I said, once that's done, 
click the exit button and then you are registered all right so if you require system access like i said your aa must transfer you into a position with user roles uh, the system will notify you once you're able to log into your army using your email address you entered earlier all right so that's why i said it's, it's critical that you use your military email all right so i hope that was helpful um, like i said that's the self-registration process it's pretty easy um, it's not that hard it's not that complicated um, it is what it is so i hope you're enjoying this series so far i know the first four videos have been kind of boring but we're getting ready to vamp or revamp up to some uh, more exciting material and actually get into actually doing what an AA does and what he's supposed to do. So without further ado, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go ordinance.